Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're diving into the intriguing connection between two intellectual giants, Charles Darwin and Thomas Malthus. Can you believe that the theory of evolution by natural selection might not exist without Malthus's controversial ideas? Stick around to find out how these two great minds are linked and the implications of their theories on our future. Let's get started. Let's go back to 1859, a super important year when everything changed in biology. Why, you ask? Well, it's when our main man Charles Darwin published The Origin of Species, a game changer that introduced the theory of evolution by natural selection. Now you might be thinking that Darwin just pulled these brilliant ideas out of thin air, but hold your horses. Our science hero didn't come up with everything on his own. In fact, he was inspired by another cool dude, Thomas Malthus, who wrote an essay on the principle of population way back in 1798. So, yeah, you could say that without Malthus, the origin of species might not even exist. How's that for a plot twist? It's kind of like when your favorite musician says their music was influenced by some old-school artist you've never heard of, and suddenly you start appreciating their work even more. So, next time you're chatting about evolution with your pals, remember to give a shout-out to both Darwin and Malthus, the dynamic duo who shaped modern biology. Back in the 18th and 19th centuries, England was having a rough time. Living conditions were getting worse, especially in big cities like London and Manchester. Picture this. Poor people crammed in slums, living in crappy houses with awful sanitation. Not fun, right? As more folks moved into cities, some smarty pants started thinking about population growth and its effects. Fun fact. The world population doubled during the 19th century. One of those thinkers was a dude named William Godwin. He wrote a book called The Inquirer and argued that more people meant more workers, more wealth, and a better life for everyone. Sounds good, huh? But Malthus was like, hold up, buddy. He didn't agree with Godwin at all. So what did he do? He wrote his own essay to prove Godwin wrong. Talk about a heated debate. And that's how Malthus wrote his famous essay, all because he didn't want to let Godwin have the last word. Sometimes a little disagreement can go a long way. So let's talk about this Malthus guy and his ideas. You know, the one who was all about food and people making more people, right? Let me break it down in simple terms for you. Malthus basically said, first of all, we need food to live. Shocker, I know. Second, he thought we humans just can't help but keep making more of ourselves because, well, we enjoy it. So as we keep having more babies, our population gets bigger and bigger. Now, here's the catch. Our population grows super fast, like those rabbits in your backyard, exponentially to be fancy. But food production? Not so much. It's more like a casual stroll, increasing in a straight line, linearly. So, yeah, we're kind of outgrowing our food supply, folks. Malthus warned that eventually there won't be enough grub to go around and people will go hungry. Not fun, right? Fun fact. Did you know that Malthus lived in the 18th century? He couldn't have imagined we'd have things like vertical farming and lab-grown meat today. But wait, there's more. Malthus thought this food shortage would lead to even worse stuff like sickness, starvation, and, um, murder. Yikes. But hey, at least we can always bond over our shared love of food, right? Real-life example? Well, sometimes we see food shortages and high population growth in certain areas of the world, which can lead to problems. But fingers crossed, we'll keep finding new ways to keep everyone fed. Our main man, Darwin, was having a tough time piecing together all his awesome ideas for this thing called evolution. You know, that sciencey stuff we all love. So he's chilling out one day and stumbles upon this essay by Malthus. And guess what? It's like a light bulb moment for our buddy Darwin. Malthus was rambling on about how human populations just keep growing and growing like rabbits. Am I right? Now here's a fun fact for you. All living things can make way more babies than the world can handle. I mean, think about it. A mama frog can pop out thousands of eggs, and an oak tree can drop millions of acorns in its lifetime. But the world isn't like some crazy frog and oak tree party, right? Darwin's like, whoa, hold up. If all these organisms are having a gazillion babies, but we're not drowning in frogs and acorns, something's up. That's when it hits him. Only some of these little guys are cut out for survival, and boom! He's got the key to how natural selection works. 
It's kind of like reality TV, but for animals and plants. Life's just one big game of Survivor for them. Darwin and Malthus, two old-timey dudes, have been BFFs in history books for, like, ever. While everyone's been high-fiving Darwin for his super-popular theory, poor Malthus has been getting the side-eye and some serious eye-rolling for his thoughts on population. People keep pointing out his goof-ups, like not realizing how awesome farmers would get with things like fertilizers, irrigation, and fancy machines. Oh, and he totally missed the memo on family planning and contraception, which made having fewer babies a thing. That's why a bunch of smarty-pants economists think Malthus is just a clueless crystal ball gazer. But hold up! Malthus is making a comeback, y'all! Why? Well, the United Nations dropped some stats saying we'll have over 9 billion humans on Earth by 2050. Gulp! A bunch of experts are freaking out, thinking our little blue marble can't handle so many peeps. The WWF, the nature peeps, not the wrestlers, even said in their 2008 Living Planet report that we're using up Earth's resources 30% faster than it can handle. So, what happens when we hit 9 billion? Will the world turn into a hot mess of poverty, hunger, and sickness? Malthus's supporters are like, duh, of course that's what's gonna happen. But the naysayers think our tech-savvy brains will cook up some yet-to-be-dreamed-up solutions so we can all live long and prosper, Star Trek style. The catch? We won't know who's right for a long time. So until then, why not grab some popcorn, sit back, and enjoy the great Malthus vs. Optimist showdown. What an insightful journey into the lives and thoughts of Charles Darwin and Thomas Malthus. We've learned how Malthus's ideas on population growth influenced Darwin's theory of evolution and how both of their ideas have shaped the way we view the world today. As the debate over our planet's capacity to support a growing population continues, only time will tell who's right. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more fascinating content like this. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think Malthus's predictions will come true? Or will technology save us from the perils of overpopulation? Let's discuss. Until next time, stay curious and keepy.